Thank you very much for joining me as I try and take apart the epidemiology of strange patterns across the world. This is where I'm taking on the neurological COVID storm, and I'm taking this from a different angle. My view is that everything is COVID-19 until proved otherwise, a very important principle that I use to try and guide me to make sense of what is happening, especially when the patterns don't make sense. And so I'm going to take you through what my thinking is, and I suspect that in another year or so, you will come back to this moment and you will say, wow, I heard this here, okay? Because this is actually quite a lot of insight. So let's start with the basics, as we say, looking at India's most dangerous disease X outbreak. Essentially, what I'm doing when I think about this is that I am following the science of what has been happening in India. And some people don't quite know what is going on. So my question is really, could SARS-CoV-2 immune dysregulation be fueling post-infectious autoimmunity? It's a mouthful. Essentially, I'm saying, is COVID the main driver for some of these unusual patterns that we're seeing across the world? Critical question to understand. As usual, before we start, this is the disclaimer. This presentation, this information, is purely in the context of information. It cannot replace your physician or a qualified health provider. So if you are in an emergency, please call your doctor or go to the emergency department. So let's get started with a few things. And here is what, by the end of the full presentation, those people who are with me should hopefully understand. The principles of post-COVID infectious autoimmunity. I'm going to be highlighting the connection between Campylobacter and neurological disease. I'm going to let you know about what is Guillain-Barre syndrome. And I'm going to talk about the Congo malaria outbreak again, and the connection to the current measles outbreak in the United States. Now, these principles, as I said, by the end of the presentation, for those who are in the webinar, you should be able to see the patterns that I am looking at. And essentially, the principle is that of a COVID storm, good old-fashioned principles. So the COVID storm is recurring COVID infection and the principle of COVID vaccination with immune priming. This is slightly different because it's now recurring COVID infection occurring in an endemic situation. And you'll understand what I mean when I say an endemic situation here by the end. A few basic principles to start off with. Whenever we're talking about bacteria, there are multiple different types of bacteria. You have cocci, you have bacilli. They tend to be round. So if you have two of them, it's a diplococcus. This is a streptococcus because it's multiple cocci together. And this is staphylococcus, which tends to make clumps. And then you have bacilli. These are more likely, a bit more oval shaped. And you can have diplobacilli as well, streptobacilli. And then you have others. You have rods. You have a spirillium, spirochetes. This is relevant here. And this is the one that I want you to notice in the context of what we're talking about. And that's just to highlight that all of these different bacteria cause different kinds of diseases. And depending on the characteristic of the bacteria will determine what can happen. So now let's go to the bacteria that I am focused on in the context of neurological disease linked to India at the moment. That's the point. You'll understand why it's only just India at the moment, but hopefully by the end, you'll understand the links. I'm talking about Campylobacter. It's a gram-negative bacteria. As I pointed out, it's spiral shape. It's motile movement and with has this corkscrew motion to move along. It requires low amounts of oxygen levels, so it can live in your gut for long periods of time. And it's commonly found in the intestines of animals, especially poultry. And essentially, it causes quite a severe diarrhea in some people. 
And critically, the important thing about Campylobacter is that it is endemic in different parts of the world. And so it's part of the thing that you can get as a traveler's diarrhea, because if you travel to different parts of the world and you're exposed and you don't have proper immunity to it, you can then get quite sick with it. And these are the parts of the world where you have endemic Campylobacter infection. So you can see here in Asia, Thailand, Vietnam, Cambodia, in Africa, Ethiopia, Kenya, Uganda, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, and in the South America, Peru, Bolivia, Mexico, Haiti, Guatemala. So this is where Campylobacter infections are endemic. And very often this is related to water supply. So if you have poor water supply that, you know, um, gets infested, dead animals are around or other things, you can then get water that is contaminated. What's very important is that very often people who live in those areas have pretty strong immune systems against it. And so they can oftentimes function even with subclinical infection. And this is the pattern that we're going to be seeing throughout this presentation. The question is, is what is the connection between this infection in the gut and neurology? How do they connect? Well, you have to first understand this condition called Guillain-Barre syndrome. And I've demonstrated here in the picture, this is somebody who is on a ventilator. It's an autoimmune disease. It mainly affects the peripheral nervous system. And again, I have a section explaining this afterwards. You can have weakness, paralysis, and difficulty breathing in severe cases. This is what happens to some patients, and they can die because of this. The immune system can target specific parts of the nerve, and usually we'll give them intravenous immunoglobulins to try and mop up the autoantibodies, try and get them out of the blood with plasmapheresis and supportive care like being on a ventilator. It's a pretty serious condition, not just in the acute phase where you can die, but even beyond that, patients can have long-term disability. It can sometimes take months for other patients to quiet, quiet, try and get better. So it doesn't, it, it's an important condition. And again, it's not that common, but whenever we see it, we know to act on it very, very urgently. So, this is where the context of this neurological storm comes. In this picture, you have this storm. You have COVID here, and COVID, whenever it interacts with any endemic disease, produces a storm. That's essentially what I'm saying here. Follow this carefully. If you have, at population level, outbreaks of COVID, if there is any endemic disease, you potentially can get a storm, okay? That's the principle. And you'll understand, therefore, when I'm finished, why it is that this is so relevant. Now, let's get into the details of what happened around Guillain-Barre in the region of Pune in, um, in India. And just so that you have an understanding, I have got here a map of the region so that you can see it. So this here, as you zoom out, is India. And right here, this little dot is that Pune region. And we can zoom right in on it. And as you zoom in on it, there are a few things that I want you to notice. Northern part of the district, is the Pimpri Chinwad region, the southern part down here, the Pune region. But look carefully at this dam. It's a Kandakwalasa dam. Okay, very important information because it supplies most of this region here. On the other side, in this region here, you have another dam that is higher up. And I think it is this dam here that supplies all of that region down there. The important thing here to note is that there are two separate dams. Oh, it's this one here, the Karasai Dam. 
and you can see that here, is in the northern part and supplies this region. Now, that's very important in the context of what I'm trying to explain. Because when we look at what happened in that region, you are going to see that initially the disease was occurring in this region here. And this region was where they had the cases first. And they found a Campylobacter in the water. That means the water had become contaminated. And therefore, the thought was that because there is a strong association between Campylobacter and the um, uh, guillain barre syndrome, this was the cause of the outbreak. But as I said, I had been following this very closely. And so a month ago, my instinct was that this is not so straightforward. And my question was, if I am right, we are going to see an outbreak of Guillain-Barre syndrome in a region not supplied by this water supply. And of course, within a few weeks, we started to have cases in this region where the water supply comes from a completely separate dam. Now, it is possible both dams got more contaminated with Campylobacter, but this is a region that is endemic with Campylobacter. Why all of a sudden would you have the outbreak of Guillain-Barre syndrome in the context of an endemic region of Campylobacter? This is why I said that you have to analyze the situation beyond the superficial. So, here was what I then did. As I said, I took the time to really interrogate what was going on. And when you utilize the power of artificial intelligence to get you the information that you need, it really allows your analysis to go to a different level. So here is what I found out. My question was very simple. I believed that the outbreak in that region of Pune was not connected purely with Campylobacter, but it was a neurological storm. That means that it would have been connected with a COVID outbreak. But there was no evidence of COVID. So how would I come up with that kind of analysis? Well, what I do is I look for the fact whether or not they had big events in and around the region. And as fate would have it, once you then do the analysis, there we have. In that region, you had three major events. The Christmas Wonderland, December 24th, 25th, 100 stalls, lots of people. They had a Christmas mega dance, December 26th, over 3,000 attendees. And they had, over the period of time, between December 3rd to 24th, a huge pro Kabaddi league matches, which had large audiences. So what you would have had over this Christmas into the New Year period was massive spreading of COVID with subclinical infection. Really important to grasp this. And a lot of people don't get this. They think that the only thing that matters is severe COVID-19. Well, I'm here to tell you that's not the only thing that matters. Even COVID spread causes a lot of immune dysregulation across the population. And so this is an absolutely critical part of the puzzle. Now, someone may say, well, it just happened in that region and it's settling down, so it probably is just Campylobacter. Well, as fate would have it, I interrogated the science again. And guess what? Within the past few weeks, and I'll show you this now here. This is again showing you, I'm going to be showing you a, a map of India, but to demonstrate essentially that what is happening is not just happening in that region. And so here we have another map of India. Over here is the Pune district. And then down here is this Andhra Pradesh region. And within the past few weeks, they have had about 17 cases of Guillain-Barre syndrome, one death. They are not connected. And as fate would have it, they had a major political event occurring 
in the past few weeks, lots of attendees, you are then going to have circulation of COVID. The principle is that if you underestimate what happens when there is significant circulation of this virus, you will be not able to understand what is happening. Now remember, for those people who know what I've been talking about and those people who have been following what I've said, in the past two days, I have highlighted that information, credible information is coming through that this virus is nowhere near normal. It's a culmination of almost a hundred years of research to put together a frighteningly lethal virus. If you don't understand that, you will ignore what I say. But for those people who understand what we are up against, we need every ounce of thinking to get our minds around it. Because the principle still remains. This virus is fueling immune dysregulation and out of it will come post-infectious autoimmunity. Challenging times ahead. Thank you for being with me for the YouTube audience. I think we'll be going on now to our webinar for other um, people. If you want to see the full presentation where I go through all of the bits, where I give you more details about Campylobacter, how it interacts to cause Guillain-Barre, what happened in the Congo with malaria, and what my prediction is with regards to what's happening with measles in the USA. If you want to hear that, please, in time, get it on Substack and you'll be able to see the full presentation. Have a great evening.